Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Rise of the Retro Arcade! Um, and this episode is a very special episode because it's actually a visit to a mancade! I'm finally visiting a mancade, or a fellow mancade, uh, or a fellow person who has a mancade. This is a mancade, and a girl cade, and everybody's cade. It's an arcade bar! It's an arcade! The guy I went and visited, Mr. Jason Hyde, wonderful human being, uh, got in touch with me on YouTube and said, Hey Ben! I have a mancade, um, I would love for you to come and visit it, and film it, and hang out, and talk about arcade games. And I did just that! Um, so please sit back and enjoy a tour around Jason Hyde's mancade. Basically started about uh, 10 years ago when I discovered that you can actually buy your own arcade machine <laughs> on uh, online, and, and I thought, wow, that's, this is crazy. And, I think I just stumbled upon um, some arcade machines on eBay. And I thought, wow, you know, this, I thought they would be crazy expensive, but they were like really affordable. But the only drawback was that um, they, ne they weren't working. <laughs> so I was, like, oh. I was like, okay, well, you can pick up an arcade for a couple hundred bucks, and, and all you've got to do is get it, get it working, and you, you can start your own collection. So that's pretty much um, what, what got things started for me. We've got a, uh, this is an LAI Mortal Kombat 1. Uh, dedicated cabinet. It's got the original artwork on the sides and midway stickers on the front. So it's running original uh, game board, original arcade hardware. So I restored that one from scratch. When I picked it up, that was pretty much an empty cabinet. I had to put a 25 inch screen in there, get an arcade chassis to suit the TV screen, to pick up the original arcade board. The panel was missing, I had to get one of those made up. Uh, marquee lights, uh, do all the wiring and all that. So I'm pretty much almost everything. <laughs> Yeah, I guess that's one of the games that I have um, sort of fond memories of playing during my childhood. Uh, going, going to the arcade and just playing Mortal Kombat 1 and I just remember seeing those fatalities with Sub-Zero <laughs> to ripping the guy's head off and I just thought, wow, this is insane. And <laughs> Picked it up, uh, where did I, oh yeah, it was on eBay. Um, it was from a guy down in Victoria and uh, yeah, it was for around 200 bucks. But it was pretty much just the shell. The only reason why I got it is because it had the, the side artwork was in good condition. So that was one of the, the draw cards for me, yeah. Got to work slowly, so just every weekend I just started doing bits and pieces on it. And yeah, after about you know, four or five weeks, I got it up and running, so. A lot of, lot of the uh, major part that helped me was getting onto the forums. Aussie Arcade was one of them. Uh, a lot of people who worked in the industry, technicians who um, know the ins and outs of the system, so they really got me started in um, understanding the repairs and how they all work. Learning how to repair the, uh, the machines and once I started fixing one then obviously you get one and it grows from there. <laughs> then to evolve to pretty much the collection that you see now. <laughs> so this is the Ultimate MK3. This is a reproduction uh, midway cabinet. So it's, it's not an original cabinet. Um, someone's, someone's built it from scratch. Uh, so when I picked it up, it was, you know, it was, it was already built. I just um, I just set up the emulator behind it, so it's actually a MAME cabinet. So it's running, you know, it's running Hyperspin on it with four different games on it. I mainly use it for uh, Mortal Kombat. Yeah, this is this is Mortal Kombat Project. You can see all the fighters there. So it's got all the different variations. That you can play as the bosses as well. And the one cool thing about this is that um, you can actually have two players play against one. Yeah, so I'm on this one, Sub Zero. There, you can, you can go two against one or two against two. <laughs> So it's pretty cool, yeah. Yeah, I've got the iPad controller there wired up to all the joysticks and buttons and yeah, if I need to get into the menus, I've got the keyboard there. So you can see that it is actually a main cabinet, um, not running the original hardware, but it's um, it looks pretty much the real deal because you know, I've got a CRT screen in there, so it's, it's, um, it's, not, it's not an LCD or anything, so it looks pretty genuine. Being a big Mortal Kombat fan, I had, had to get them all in one, so... <laughs> I've been sort of buying and selling arcade cabinets for probably about um, 10 years maybe and during that time I've probably, I've probably sold about yeah, 20 or so on eBay, Gumtree. Um, so yeah, I still remember each one because um, it's, yeah, it's a bit of a labour of love for me. I'm quite passionate about the hobby and uh, part of the restoration is, is part of the enjoyment for me, not just playing the actual game. Virtual pinball. so. It's, a, it's in an original uh, pinball cabinet, but it's, um, again, it's all emulated. So I've got a, 
you know, LCD screen in there. Uh, got about 400, 400 odd uh, pinball uh, games emulated on here. So that, that's a digital ball pretty much bouncing around there. It emulates the, the, the game pretty well. And uh, if I want to change games, pretty much go back to the menu here. So you can see all the different tables here. So there's about 400 odd games there. So you've got all the classics, you know, up to uh, not 80s, 90s, uh, all up to the latest Stern titles as well. So, yeah, Getaway is one of my favourite. I actually had an original Getaway pinball uh, many years ago, but um, I sold that and I've since got the virtual cabinet. So, Terminator 2 is a pretty cool one. Let's just fire that up. So, it does a pretty good job with emulation. It's running a visual, visual pinball. Uh, nine and yeah there's a screen behind running the uh, display of the DMD as well so it's it's all it's all emulated and uh, yeah it's pretty cool so you can play you know hundreds of pinballs on the one machine this is original uh, Galaxian cabinet it's um, it's actually running a 61 board behind it with an LCD screen so um, but yeah I did a fair bit of work on this one as well it's got the original artwork on the side you know uh, I got the control panel replaced uh, all new overlay stickers buttons uh, I whacked an LCD in there just because it was easier and, but um, I know some of the hardcore fans would you know so you got to run the CRT, <laughs> but um, yeah, I'm running an LCD in there, 16-1 board. So you've got all your classics there, you know, Gallagher and Pac-Man and Donkey Kong and all that. So Galaxian is the first game. Gallagher was the sequel. Yeah, Gallagher's probably one of my favourites. So you could, you know, you could play for hours on there. One of my childhood favourites. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I had to, had to get this one. Um, I picked it up only a few months ago, actually. It's very uh, fortunate to to get this one. Um, Bought it off a guy uh, down in Victoria as well, I believe, off, off the Aussie Arcade Forum. Uh, so it was already working, so I didn't have to do anything to it, really. Um, yeah, original, yeah, everything original. Um, awesome game. Ah, and it's got, you know, the original recoils and everything, so... You know, you can just go nuts on this. I've already, I've already played through it with my son, and, we, yeah, we think it took us about, I don't know, maybe... Uh, close to an hour to finish the game, <laughs> but uh, yeah, well, one of my favourites. Awesome game, man. Yeah, it's, so it's running the original, original hardware, CRT, and everything. It, um, this is one game where it's it's pretty hard to, to emulate because yeah, you've got to have you know the original guns, original recoils, and it's, it's just not the same playing it on the computer. So yeah, this is. Uh, yeah, lots of fun, man. Yeah, Terminator is one of my favourite. Terminator 2 is one of my favourite movies as well, so had had to get that one. <laughs> this one won't be won't be leaving anytime soon, man. <laughs> yeah. What have we got here? Yeah, so this is um this is a sit down, you know, HD cabinet. Um, it's, it's a Namco Noah clone, which is uh basically a Chinese copyright of a. Japanese um, Nam Namco cabinet, 26 inch LCD. So these are the cabinets you would see, you know, in, in playtime, running, you know, Tekken 6, all those kind of uh, HD games. So I've actually got a, uh, I'm running an Xbox 360. <laughs> so just just because it's easier. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Tekken Tag Tournament 2 is what's running on there at the moment. But um, yeah, I. I Use it for all the sort of HD games, you know, Street Fighter 4, Street Fighter 5. Um, all your fighter games. Yeah. yeah, Tekken 6 and all that, yeah. So it was a lot easier just to um, set it up with Xbox 360 and just wire the controls up to the, the buttons here. It's, it's all original games, so yeah, Marvel vs. Capcom, all those sort of games I play on here. Mortal Kombat uh, 10, <laughs> another Mortal Kombat, Injustice, you know, Soul Calibur, Tekken 6. So. I mean, these games go for like, you know, 10 bucks at EB Games, so you know, why buy the original hardware for like $200 when you can buy for $10 at EB Games, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> Arm Champs 2, this was um, 
one of one of my Grail games, Holy Grail games. Picked it up, uh, yeah, probably five six years ago now. But um, yeah, I've got good memories of playing this at Time Zone and Joy Street with my dad, and I just remember him just smashing it. He's always used to, <laughs> he always used to uh, beat the players. But yeah, awesome game. Um, arm wrestling, as you can see, uh, it's the second one of the series, and um, yeah, it's a huge cabinet. Um, had to actually do a bit of restore on this one as well, so. Yeah, the, when I picked it up, the the, moldy, the, the, mo the motor was faulty, um, so it wasn't actually yeah moving the arm properly. The game board was stuffed, and had to put a new uh, screen in there as well. So did a did a bit of a restoration on this one as well, and but yeah, really happy to get it working. So it's yeah, it's got it's got nine opponents there, and the difficulty goes from yeah, easiest to hardest. So I can probably. Uh, Give a bit of a rundown here. So this this guy is probably as far as I can go. <laughs> this Goliath guy, he's he's the third hardest. But um, let's see how we go. Yeah, it's working all right. Yeah. <laughs> Man, that's a struggle. <laughs> I tell you, it gives you a good workout. Um, I've had some people come over and. They, they they leave with a really sore arm because <laughs> because of this game, but nah, it's, it's awesome. Dude, that's insane. What kind of motor is in that? Oh man, it's got some it's got some really heavy duty motor in there. Um, I had to take it to some um, local engineering company to actually uh, repair the motor because it had all seized up. So it's a massive motor. It's oh, it's about yay big, and uh, yeah, I couldn't figure it out, but it wasn't wasn't working and. Um, but yeah, luckily I uh, took it to a local, local um, place and they got managed to get it running. So, That's yeah, awesome, awesome work. So what, what kind of, what, how does it work, the actual motor? Is it like uh, pistons or is it like what, the resistance itself? <laughs> yeah, it's more of the resistance, yeah. The motor's connected to a couple of chains and the chains run up and they're connected to some gears which, which are connected to the arm, basically. So, yeah, when the game board tells it um, like to start the, to start the game, it starts spinning the motor, it spins the gears, and it drives the chain. And based on the difficulty of the player, uh, it spins you know, um, sort of with more resistance or less resistance. You know, it's pretty complicated. Once I got in there, I was a bit daunted by. I was like, man, how's this work? How am I supposed to repair this? <laughs> but um, I don't do the board repairs myself, so I sent the game board off to a technician and got him to fix that while. I got the motor repaired and put the screen in there and did the rest myself. So, Dude, awesome job! I've never seen one of those in the wild, man. That's uh, yeah, that's incredible. You don't see, you know, you don't see these around very much. Um, but um, yeah, it's an awesome game, man. Oh, yeah, so this is um, this is the yeah the del deluxe cabinet, um, Lost World Jurassic Park. Also another game I used to play at um, Time Zone and Joy Street. So I've pretty much yeah collected a lot of games that I used to play during my childhood. And this was this was one of my favourite shooters. Um, awesome game. It's a rail shooter by Sega, Lost World. Uh, so as you can see, I um, I replaced the reprojection screen with the LCD. As you can see, I haven't played this game in a while, so I'm pretty hopeful. <laughs> when I picked it up, um, I was living at my previous house, and I had to get a. Luckily, the, the guy who sold it to me actually drove it here himself from Melbourne, so. <laughs> I was really happy he did that. Otherwise, because um, the courier company, they wouldn't, they wouldn't deliver it. They said it was too big. <laughs> so the guy, yeah, the seller actually delivered it. So I was really lucky to do that. Yeah. Dude, it's huge. Massive cabinet, yeah. It's, um, yeah, it's just having the whole experience because it's got surround sound in there as well, speakers up the back. So it just gives you that full, you know, arcade experience. That's a beautiful cabinet. Yeah. Top game, yeah. Got my VHS collection there, a few horror titles. Um, also, a bit of a nostalgia piece for me. I used to love going to the video store with my parents and uh, always used to go to the horror, horror section. So, decided to set up my own horror section here, really. <laughs> with a, lot of, a lot of the horror titles that I used to watch uh, growing up. And just, yeah, a lot of classics from the 80s and 90s. So, I just, I just like looking at the covers, so that's why I set them all up there. And, it's just, yeah, it is a cool addition to the, to the man cave. Do you have your own barcade? 
Yeah, obviously, uh, just uh, just for fun. I don't have a license to sell or anything, but uh, yeah, you got all your drinks there for parties, and um, yeah, very popular for cocktails and people who want to have a drink. So, what's better than having a having a few beers, having a drink, and some video games, you know? <laughs> That's true. So, <laughs> yeah, and I got the video jukebox as well, so yeah, people can choose their own music, so. That's all connected online as well, so people can just search up uh, music titles and um, play the music as well. And is this a topic for uh, Terminator Pinball? Yeah, yeah, that's the um, that's the back glass for Terminator 2 Pinball. So uh, I just like the artwork on it, so that's why I decided to um, yeah create get get a head box and just stick it up on the wall, a bit of a display piece. It's great, man. Yeah. I know, I know. the display piece over here as well with all the bits and bobs. Yeah. There's a Terminator yeah. C800 right here. Yeah, that's the Terminator endoskeleton there, and uh, yeah, that's that's a genuine uh, replica. So that cost me a small fortune from um, <laughs> from sideshow toys in the US. It's worth every penny. <laughs> it is. It's pretty cool. That's awesome. Yeah. I've never seen one of those before. Yeah, eyes big. light up, man. And uh, yeah, my other figurines a collection there as well. So right got the uh, Ed 209 from Robocop and Mortal Kombat Scorpion, uh, Arnie back in the background and uh, um, Kratos. So yeah, that's my little sort of uh, toy collection there as well, which I'm slowly building up. For you, why are classic games, especially classic arcades, so important? Oh, I think it's it's good to it, it's a it's a piece of history really, and um, it, it's like classic movies. You know, people love the the classic movie titles. You can watch them on Netflix, but with, with arcade games, like um, it, it's you got to have the original like machines to be able to experience the you know the real uh, arcade experience. It's just not the same sort of you know playing it on your computer. <clears throat> so it's. It's um, plus it brings that nostalgia as well. So just being able to play on like original cabinet, just like you would, um, you know, back in the '90s if you're at Time Zone. It's just um, it's it's brings that yeah nostalgia and really sort of um, arcade experience back to your home. So that's good to have. So there we have it, uh, Jason. What a wonderful guy. What a wonderful human being. It was so much fun to hang out and walk around the arcade. Um, I loved everything about the arcade. I loved the carpet. I never seen the uh, arm wrestling game, the Challenge Two game. That was amazing. Never seen that in the flesh. So much fun to hang out um, and uh, get taken on a tour. And that Terminator Two cab. Oh my God. Okay, so Terminator Two has been a project cab here in 1989 for a few months. I bought one. Oh my gosh, I don't know how many months ago, and it was in pretty rough state. So Magic Mike at the moment is fixing it up, and. Uh, when Jason showed me his uh, Terminator 2, I was like, hey man, you know that I'm fixing up on a Terminator 2 and I'm having a uh, hell of a time with it because I keep missing parts or I keep needing to find parts that are really hard to find. And he was like, well, what do you need? And I was like, oh, these really obscure little um, plastic sort of gears that go on the bottom of the guns. He went, well, I've got two spare guns. And I, he pulled them out and he had two of these. See that? See this little plastic thing here? This is exactly what I need to fix up my Terminator 2, and Jason had it. He had two of these. I've got them both, and not only that, he gave me them for free. So thank you, Jason. I'm sure the good folks that come and visit 989 will also thank you as well when I finally get Terminator 2 on the floor because the legend Jason um, gave me these uh, gun parts to uh, fix up my Terminator 2. So, oh my gosh, expect that on the floor of 892. Uh, Terminator 2 on the floor of 1989 soon, I should say. Um, all right, well there we go. If you have a arcade collection, a mancade, a girl cade, an arcade in the back of your house, in your basement, in your loft, whatever, um, get in touch because I would love to come and visit. I would love to come and film uh, your collection and chat arcade games. Uh, this is my passion. This is what I love to do. Um, the arcade cabinets are my life. Um, so if you're a collector, please get in touch so you can reach me via the, uh, the comments below um, here at YouTube or hit me up at 1989. The email is hey at 1989.com.au. Uh, regardless, please comment and subscribe, guys. I hope you're enjoying the channel. I'm sorry I've been away for a bit. Um, new content is coming. It's been an exciting few weeks. A lot's been going on. There's some exciting news coming up here to do with 1989. So as always, thank you for watching. Thank you for your support. If you've got an arcade and you would love for me to come and film it, get in touch because I'd love to come and hang out.
All right, guys. See you soon. Bye.